important point of time uh, the government of india has just unrolled its uh, vaccination program and uh, that should sort of take us uh, towards uh, a greater uh, towards greater safety security after a terrible year of the pandemic uh, i would now uh, request dr jay sharma uh, to introduce uh, today's uh, discussion and invite uh, the honorable minister for health uh, dr harshvardhan Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Dr. Harshvardhan, Dr. Indu Bhushan, CEO of Atmanirbhar Bharat, Mr. Kanchan Gupta, Distinguished Fellow ORF, Dr. Anand Rangnathan, Scientist and Professor JNU, uh, Dr. Raman Ganga Khedkar, former Head Scientist of Epidemiology and uh, Communicable Diseases at ICMR. It is my privilege to be here today to welcome you all to the sixth session in the 10 part webinar series on the road to Atmanirbhar Bharat. The Honorable Prime Minister has laid out the vision for a self reliant India, and all of us have a critical role to play in turning that vision into reality. I believe this road to Atmanirbhar Bharat will lead us to prosperity through growth, job creation, and import saving. It will also enable Indian economy to become globally competitive and unleash the full potential of our human resources. I'm delighted that Swarajya has taken the initiative to organize this webinar series, which is bringing together experts to deliberate on the future. With these webinars, we are starting a dialogue and opening many doors that will help us actualize our Prime Minister's vision. At Vedanta, we are tirelessly working towards creating an Atmanirbhar Bharat, and it is our pleasure to associate with this wonderful venture by Swarajya. As experts with clear vision for our country come together on this platform, we are sure it will generate great ideas and will facilitate their implementation. It is my privilege to welcome Dr. Harshwardhan. In his, with his in-depth medical knowledge, he has been a great practitioner and his work in Pulse Polio program is memorable. He has been also leading a very successful fight against COVID over the last 10 months. We look forward to his address and insights on how all of us can contribute to the vision of Prime Minister and the government. Once again, I warmly welcome you all and request you to join the exciting journey towards a strong, self-reliant India. Thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon. Shall I start now? Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Please, please, please. Am, I, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, please. So, uh, so, shall I start now? Yes, sir. Please start. Thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. My eminent colleagues, Dr. Indu Bhushan ji, Dr. Ganga Khedkar ji, my learned friends, both of whom are ace authors, Kanchan Gupta ji, Prasanna Vishwanathan ji, and my dear scientist friend, Anand Ranganathan ji, friends from the industry who are the backbone of our Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, the organizing team of this webinar series, Swarajya and Vedanta, and friends from the media. First of all, I must congratulate Swarajya for taking up a series of webinars on the theme of Nirbhar Bharat. Our government led by Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji has been deeply inspired by Pandit Deendayal Upadhyay ji's idea of Antyodaya for serving the very last person 
in the society. In fact, Atma Nirbhar Bharat has become one of the focal areas of our government, around which all economic policies are being drawn up. Our government is focused on bridging the gap between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots, and on providing equal opportunity to all Bhartiya citizens, which is the real meaning of Antyodaya. We all know that India can progress only if each citizen progresses. And for each citizen to progress, we need to be self-reliant, which is Atma Nirbharta. Atma Nirbhar Bharat is a plan to free India from the clutches of poverty to ensure that all Indians have equal access to not just kapla roti or makan, but to make a qualitative change in their living by giving them access to bank accounts, 24 by 7 power, portable drinking water, housing, social security, and most of all, employment and good food leading to good and healthy living. As a step in the direction of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, we launched the Make in India initiative to drive India as a hub for manufacturing, cutting edge research and innovation. We fully understand that with industry will come greater employment for our youth, which will ignite prosperity in their lives. We have eased norms for doing business. We are working to make our tax structures competitive, simplifying procedures, and removing unnecessary regulations, and placing enormous focus on technology as well. I am confident these efforts will directly benefit the poor of India and provide them the windows of opportunity they deserve. Yesterday, I was reflecting on the invitation sent to me by Swarajya and found it interesting that Swarajya should be hosting this webinar series on Atma Nirbhar Bharat because conceptually both are similar. Swaraj means self-governance or self-rule and was used synonymously with home rule by Maharshi Dayanand Saraswati ji and later on by Gandhi ji. 
but the word usually refers to gandhi ji's idea of indian independence from foreign domination a swatantra bharat similarly atmanirbhar bharat means a self reliant india that is not dependent on any other and is free from domination essentially a swatantra bharat both mean the same so i am happy that the core dna of our governments flagship movement of building a self reliant india has been taken up by swarajya the very name of which implies swatantra bharat and atma nirbhar bharat however i must add here that some people have given this a wrong connotation by saying that self reliant india or atma nirbhar bharat means boycotting foreign goods no on the contrary atma nirbhar bharat or self reliant india <coughs> lives in the concept of vasudhav kutumbakam it means ending india's dependence on other countries and moving towards development and progress what we have in india we must promote and what we don't have in our country we must innovate and make what we cannot have and still need we take from others from anywhere across the globe being self reliant is the dream of every individual society and the nation human progress is possible only by self sufficiency only a self reliant nation can make its nation paramount swadeshi does not and should not be interpreted as isolation it is india's bridge between localization and globalization ever since we attained independence there was a lot of political rhetoric around import substitution around becoming self reliant about giving more and more opportunities to our youth but it did not happen now prime minister modi 
has called upon the nation to participate wholeheartedly in building the atma nirbhar bharat of our dreams he has announced a massive economic stimulus package for the launch of the self reliant india campaign you all know that our honorable prime ministers call for a self reliant india came when we were battling covid like the rest of the world we were also seeing death every day living under the fear of death the crisis was unprecedented global leadership was depressed it was at that time of deep depression and economic recession that prime minister modi said that india must see the covid-19 pandemic crisis as an opportunity and focused on five fundamental pillars the economy technology infrastructure vibrant demography and the demand to create a self reliant india for the e address the nation from the red fort on the occasion of india's 74th independence day and gave a call for atmanirbhar bharat a swatantra bharat asserting that there was no meaning of independence without the nation being economically independent he gave us two slogans vocal for local and make in india to make for the world he fired the imagination of the country even his worst critics will admit that is call for moving towards atmanirbharta for the need of the r it is necessary to understand that the definition of self reliance has undergone a change in the globalized world and when the country talks about self reliance it is different from being self centered self reliance will prepare the country for tough competition in the global supply chain and it is important that the country wins this competition the swadeshi model is an ideal economic model that would balance both national exigencies as well as 
द इंटरनेशनल कंपल्शन नाउ लेट मी कम टू द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ सेल्फ रिलायंस इन हेल्थ केयर इंडिया हैज बीन मेकिंग सिग्निफिकेंट एडवांसेस टूवर्ड्स बिकमिंग सेल्फ रिलायंट under the leadership of our honorable prime minister to make tangible changes to the health indicators across the board india we all know accounts for only 2.4% of the world land mass and yet it supports and sustains 16.9% of the world population we are a rapidly developing economy a population density of 382 persons per square kilometer and 35% of urban population living in slums with very high population density across the world after the pandemic uh, raised its ugly head people thought that with our density of population and given our resource constraint coupled with poor infrastructure we would be among the worst hit nations of the world and yet we proved the world wrong throughout the pandemic we had among the lowest mortality rates in the whole world the proactive preemptive and graded whole of government whole of society approach that india followed in managing covid-19 has been one of the hallmarks of its response right from the beginning since january the health ministry has been working in close coordination with the prime minister's office various ministries and the various state governments the first advisory if i can recall was issued on 17th of january 2020 and thermal screening of incoming passengers from china and hong kong was initiated on 18th january 2020 itself this was followed up by surveillance at all other points of entry including land and sea ports at any given point of time we had lakhs of people under community surveillance supported by our robust integrated disease surveillance program what i could tell you is a fairly detailed step by step strategy that we unleashed to better the pandemic of how we swung into action on continuity of 
routine services, especially provision and availability of essential public services while maintaining the pandemic response simultaneously. It was a Herculean challenge understanding the highly infectious nature of the disease and the need to ensure overall healthcare availability across the country. India did a strategic repurposing of the existing health infrastructure to ensure that the health systems providing primary health care at grassroots levels were left untouched. But as I said, the detailed strategy would take a whole day to explain it to all of you. In short, I can proudly claim that we did not lose a minute even. Since 25th March 2020, when the lockdown was imposed, we utilized this time to upgrade the health infrastructure, build capacity of healthcare workers, and ensure availability of requisite logistics in the country. For example, whereas there were no indigenous manufacturing of PPEs with the requisite standards at that point of time, we are now self-sufficient and in a position to export the same PPEs. Laboratory diagnosis for COVID-19 is one of the key interventions in India's test, track, isolate, and treat policy. The rapid enhancement of testing facilities is a success story in India. From one single lab in NIV Pune, where we isolated the virus, we are today at more than 2,000 300 ICMR certified labs for testing COVID-19 samples. A study done by a Harvard affiliate, the Institute for Competitiveness, has highlighted our success story from being an import dependent nation to becoming the world's second largest manufacturer of class three PPE required in pandemic settings. It is also to be noted that very limited indigenous manufacturing was available at the time of the lockdown with regard to manufacturing of the ventilators too. This capacity was also enhanced to attain self-reliance. It is also worthy to note that amidst the pandemic, India 
from being import dependent on reagents, swabs, and other diagnostic related equipment became self-sufficient. Our premier institute, ICMR, Indian Council for Medical Research, undertook a detailed exercise to upgrade our diagnostic capacity development in the country. And as on 13th January 2021, that was yesterday, 326 RT-PCR kits have been evaluated of which 149 have been approved for use. Similarly, for antigen testing, 18 antigen-based rapid tests have been approved for serological testing. 25 manufacturers of IgG, ELISA kits have been approved More than 1,600 domestic manufacturers of PPE coveralls have cleared the quality test by now. More than 200 licenses were issued by BIS for manufacturing of N95 masks. With the country, now attaining self-sufficiency, the PPEs and the N95 masks have also been made available on the GEM portal. India also leveraged technological tools in the fight against the current pandemic. The Arogya Setu application was developed for the purpose of helping in COVID management. The application has been very useful and has been downloaded by 168 million users in India by now. In order to aid the surveillance and containment activities, an IT tool called Itihas was also developed by us. Further, there were major efforts undertaken to rapidly increase the infrastructure in the country. Total isolation beds increased to more than 1.5 million by the end of Unlock 6 as compared to 10,180 before the lockdown. Similarly, the number of ICU beds have increased to around 80,669 as compared to just around 2,168 before lockdown. In addition, use of telemedicine was promoted to provide teleconsultation to patients for mitigation of their illness and prevention of crowding in clinics. E-Sanjeevani, a web-based comprehensive telemedicine solution is being utilized across India to extend the reach of specialized healthcare services to the masses in both rural areas and the isolated communities. Another best practice was EICUs that provided round the clock guidance in managing ICU patients in peripheral settings. 
the department of biotechnology which is part of my another ministry did extraordinary work in supporting the advancement of vaccine candidates and related technologies under mission covid suraksha the indian covid 19 vaccine development mission we focused on accelerated vaccine development through end to end solutions from pre clinical development clinical trials manufacturing and also regulatory facilitation for deployment a national expert group on vaccine administration for covid-19 negvac was constituted under the guidance of again he has been guiding us all through honorable prime minister to monitor and decide on prioritization of population groups for vaccination the delivery mechanism of the vaccine including tracking of the vaccination process and selection of delivery platforms and indigenously developed covid you must have heard about it uh, now quite a bit on the television channels also digital platform for covid-19 vaccination delivery has also been developed covid-19 vaccination drive is also driven by make in india and both the vaccines that have received the emergency authorization in india have been manufactured indigenously we have also carried out cold chain storage assessment across the country and cold chain equipment is being supplied continuously to augment the capacity at the last mile cold chain points i am sure that our efforts aimed at mitigation of the pandemic have parallelly strengthened our health systems up to the last mile and the same will act as a foundation for further strengthening the same to provide affordable equitable and quality healthcare to all the covid pandemic has been an unfortunate event that has affected our lives and economies in an unprecedented manner however we have utilized this adversity as an opportunity to strengthen our healthcare delivery system across the whole country in may 2020 while announcing a set of reforms and initiatives as part of government measures for providing stimulus to the economy our government announced the atmanirbhar bharat package for the health sector the proposed prime minister 
आत्मनिर्भर स्वस्थ भारत योजना पैकेज ऑफ मोर देन सिक्सटी थाउजेंड करोड ऑफ रुपीज शेल स्ट्रेंथन द डिलीवरी ऑफ हेल्थ केयर सर्विसेस across the full continuum of care it will include setting up of the national regional state district and block level laboratories integrated into a network for surveillance functions backed by a robust it based reporting mechanism leading to self reliance for detection prevention and containment of disease outbreaks i am happy to state that there will be a massive employment generation as an impact of the measures that we are undertaking for self reliance in the health sector this will also build up a trained front line health workforce to respond to any public health emergencies in the future development of critical care hospital blocks in more than 600 districts as proposed under the scheme i mentioned shall make such districts self sufficient in providing comprehensive treatment for infectious diseases without disruption to the other essential health services we have also strengthened our molecular sequencing capacities this is a big initiative which can be repurposed for many other pathogens in the future the covid-19 pandemic also provided a compelling opportunity for r&d institutions academia and the industry to work in unison for sharing of purpose synergy collaboration and cooperation the department of science and technology again my ministry and its various autonomous institutions made significant efforts to address r&d and innovation related challenges arising out of the present pandemic among other measures has been the formation of a national task force with over 20 leading scientists for formulating a national super model for predicting the spread of any pandemic in the future dbt the department of biotechnology and birec an autonomous organization have been working relentlessly over the past 10 months to develop effective interventions for combating the pandemic by supporting nearly 120 projects in the thematic areas of vaccines diagnostics and therapeutics more than 200 indian manufacturers have registered under national 
बायोमेडिकल रिसोर्स इंडिजनाइजेशन कॉन्सोर्टियम दैट्स कॉल्ड द एन ब्रिक इट्स अ मेक इन इंडिया इनिशिएटिव फॉर फैसिलिटेटिंग इंडिजिनस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ फिफ्टीन मेजर molecular biology components and reagents also dbt is supporting the development of nearly 15 vaccine candidates of these three vaccine candidates are in the clinical trial stages about two candidates are in advanced pre clinical development stage amongst many other achievements the immuno assay laboratory it's a very important development of translational health science and technology institute thsti has been recognized by the coalition for epidemic preparedness innovations sapi an international body as one of the seven laboratories globally for centralized assessment of covid-19 vaccines i covid-19 bio repositories have been set up and have archived more than 40000 samples which are available for biomedical researches right now on the genomics and the therapeutics front pan india 1000 sars cov2 genome sequencing was successfully completed and data is being analyzed to understand the covid virus the indian sars cov2 genomic consortium INSSCOG has been launched recently to ascertain the status of new variants of the SARS-CoV-2 in the country as i said atmanirbharta also means taking and giving global cooperation wherever it is required we are strengthening clinical trial capacities also in our neighboring and the friendly countries under the partnerships for this advancing clinical trials pact initiative dbt our department of biotechnology is working closely with the ministry of external affairs for advancing vaccine development activities in the neighboring countries also we are also conducting training programs in these countries to strengthen the activities around clinical trials ever since the country has started waging the fight against uh, sars-cov-2 virus from early march 2020 csir one of our most uh, prestigious science organization has galvanized its considerable strength and expertise and has been contributing to the fight against covid-19 by developing new and improved diagnostics drugs vaccines and devices including the ventilator
CSIR has also made strides in understanding the molecular epidemiology and also the tracing of the viral strains in the country. It recognized early on the challenges of the disruption in the supply chain and has taken steps to circumvent the hurdles. We have developed Feluda, the novel paper-based diagnostic kit in CSIR for COVID-19 detection. Tata Sons, who took transfer of this unique technology may soon start exporting these Feluda kits. CSIR lab contributed significantly in understanding the prevalent viral strains, their mutational spectrum, spread, and distribution across India by sequencing and analyzing about 2,000 SARS-CoV-2 viral genomes. CSIR has also prioritized the development of repurposed drugs for treatment of COVID-19. Given the lack of specific drugs which we had right from the beginning, CSIR developed the process technology for repurposed drugs such as remdesivir and Savipiravir and transferred the technology to industries based on licensed technology of CSIR, CIPLA launched the affordable Favipiravir, which all of you will be able to recollect, drove market competition, leading to affordable pricing. There is no end to what all has been done in just the last one year, particularly the last eight, 10 months. CSIR has also developed the non-invasive ventilator BiPAP called SWASTVAYU in a record 36 days and transferred the technology to seven industries towards understanding supply chain issues and addressing them in the healthcare domain, an online portal called Arog Rath has also been developed. We are launching programs that are unprecedented in terms of their scale and reach also. These strides are ambitious and an evidence of our sincere commitment towards a healthy and more productive India. The work on COVID has geared us with added responsibility and energy in dealing with public health situations now. Last year, Honorable Prime Minister had launched the National Digital Health Mission in his 
इंडिपेंडेंस डे एड्रेस टू द नेशन आई एम हैप्पी टू इनफॉर्म ऑल ऑफ यू दैट द मिशन हैज बीन सक्सेसफुली rolled out in six union territories this will lead to our country deep frogging in this domain and will improve the access to and quality of health care in india my friends i have an endless repository of work that we are doing in the health sector at present and those that are going to be implemented in the near future during the pandemic with that most modesty i can claim that the world has applauded india for the manner in which we held forth and kept mortality rates at the lowest even today we are at a mortality rate of 1.44% in short i can only tell you that today we are doing everything that will directly benefit the poor and the marginalized we believe in achieving universal health care for all our citizens my view on health has always been that health is a human right and not a privilege you will all agree with me that the right to health is fundamental to the right to life as a medical professional myself i feel elated that the ayushman bharat health assurance scheme has made india the global leader in daring to tread the path of delinking health care from affluence and the ability to pay this scheme has also showcased the strong political intent of our government to make a paradigm shift in the healthcare sector seven and a half decades after we won our freedom with the creation of the national medical commission our government has already embarked upon the path to major medical education reforms and with ayushman bharat we have laid the foundation for a disease free india pandit din dayal upadhyay ji our revered leader always said chare veti chare veti यही तो मंत्र है अपना चरे वेती चरे वेती यही तो मंत्र है अपना नहीं रुकना नहीं थकना नहीं रुकना नहीं थकना सतत चलना सतत चलना द कॉल फॉर आत्मनिर्भर भारत इज एन इंस्पायरिंग कॉल to keep pursuing your mission without being overcome by any obstacles to establish a system of sacrifice and hard work and to work 
towards nation building. There is an immense need to further educate the public to become self-reliant. Once they know that they have got to stand on their own legs, it will electrify the atmosphere. This webinar series is a step in the right direction. I want you all, the enlightened audience present here today to contribute towards our collective mission of an Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Swatantra Bharat and India of our dreams. My greetings to everyone on the auspicious day of Makar Sankranti today. I will also take this opportunity to congratulate each and every Indian today because in less than two days from now, we shall be launching one of the largest humanization programs of the world, a COVID-19 vaccine program. One of the biggest success stories that India is set to clock. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity to lay down my thoughts before all of you. Thank you all for a very, very patient hearing. Namaskar. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Harshwardhan. That was a very uh, enlightening, very informative exposition, not only about the concept of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, uh, what it means, what it uh, implicates, and how it uh, impacts India both domestically and in the larger world. Uh, thank you also for uh, uh, telling us in such great detail uh, the extraordinary efforts made by the government of India in collaboration with state governments uh, to deal with the unprecedented challenge posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, last year was an extraordinary year. It was, it was a year of disruption. And uh, I, I personally believe the Prime Minister did a remarkable job of leading from the front in such difficult times. The results are there for all to see. India has dealt with this virus uh, in, in, in a far better manner than many of the developed countries with their uh, showcase healthcare systems. Uh, we have sort of crossed the hump uh, without uh, much lasting damage. Uh, I just wanted to add a couple of points that it is to be hoped that uh, moving forward, going ahead, uh, the government now focuses on creating a resilient health infrastructure it focuses on uh, resilient SDGs and it focuses on uh, a greater use of technology, technology that is not bought off the shelf from big uh, US tech or big China tech or big Europe tech, but technology that is indigenously developed and which is crafted to 
uh, meet the requirements of India. Uh, a last point which I thought I, I should make, uh, and since the Honorable Minister is here, we need to revisit our Antiquated Epidemics Act, and we need to look at how best to reformulate the law so that recalcitrant state governments uh, cannot or do not get away with impunity in such difficult times. Uh, now, may I, I mean, since we have largely run out of time, may I request uh, my co-panelists to come in with their closing remarks? Uh, uh, but please, I would request you not to exceed two minutes each. I will begin with my friend, uh, the molecular medicine uh, whisked, Dr. Anand Ranganathan. Uh, who through his work has demonstrated that there's a lot more happening in JNU than we would ever know. Anand. Thank you very much, Kanchandan, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Minister Dr. Harshwardhan, uh, and of course, Swarajya for giving me this opportunity. Uh, very briefly, two points. Number one, uh, at long last, we have a BJP minister who has finally linked um, Atmanirbhar Bharat to uh, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, and it pleases me no end because this is what uh, uh, the day Atmanirbhar Bharat was declared, uh, BJP and the government should have come out and said because I strongly believe that this is the way to go, uh, a strong bond between Atmanirbhar Bharat and Vasudeva Kutumbakam. So it is not a protectionist attitude, Atmanirbhar Bharat. So congratulations on that front. The second point I'm going to make uh, is based on uh, a small um, incident that happened. And uh, the reason why I'm going to say this is only because of that incident, because uh, I think two years ago, out of the blue, Dr. Harshwardhan invited me uh, uh, to his home for dinner. And he was asking me about uh, the situation of Indian science. He wanted to uh, be well versed with it. And I was uh, giving him a pretty glowing account. And then he stopped me and said, look, uh, give me the, the true account. Uh, because I value disagreements more than agreements because it allows me uh, to improve and learn. So, Mr. Minister, if you don't mind, uh, the next uh, uh, few uh, uh, seconds I'm going to take and tell you what uh, perhaps you know, or if you don't, I think you would value this because this is logical and rational uh, criticism. Of course, we have done spectacularly well in almost all fronts in the last one year as far as the pandemic is concerned. And you elaborated on that, but I'm afraid the, the truth also is that this was a once in a multi generational opportunity. Uh, and we have missed the bus because the fact remains that uh, designing vaccines is old hat. It is a 3 decade old technology. In fact, the day the uh, SARS CoV-2 genome was known, Moderna designed their vaccine on that same day. Now, had we designed the vaccine in March itself, when the sequences were all known, uh, uh, all the different platforms, uh, the RNA design wouldn't take a day, the other platforms wouldn't take more than a week, couple of weeks, we would have had the six months required for uh, undertaking private and publicly all the uh, phase one, two, and three trials. The advantage of that would have been, and here I link it to truly Atmanirbhata, because right now what Indian government is doing is actually spending more money than what Belgium, Belgium and other European countries are in buying the AstraZeneca vaccine. Belgium is buying it according to the Times of India report today at 156 rupees equivalent. We are buying it at 200 rupees a shot. And we are losing a uh, very valuable foreign exchange because we are making a foreign company richer. Whereas the co-vaccine one, which is indigenously designed by Indian government, ICMR, as well as NIV, as well as Bharat Biotech, is still the phase three results are not out. The Bharat Biotech chief said they would be out in February. So I think we have missed the bus. Uh, we should have designed at least half a dozen vaccines and the phase three trial should have been over by November. Uh, or maybe earlier than that, that would have given us an opportunity uh, for India to buy and mass produce these vaccines, not only for mass vaccinations in India, but also export them. So I think the reality is that here was something which was a proven technology, 30-year-old technology, and we missed the bus. Uh, I think 
uh, Mr. Minister, because you value disagreements and you like rational criticism, I'm sure you would ask uh, the people around you as to why and how this happened. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anand. Uh, I will now call upon Dr. Indu Bhushan, CEO of Ayushman Bharat. Sir, two minutes to you for your closing remarks. Uh, Dr. Indu Bhush has left. It seems we could move on to Dr. Ganga Khetkar ji, please. Yes, Dr. Raman Ganga Khetkar, former head uh, of ICMR, uh, where he, uh, uh, former head of communicable diseases at ICMR. Uh, thank you, sir, you, sir, for yeah, for providing me this opportunity uh, to to deliberate what done and what we have done. This one, I would start with one first uh, statement that, you know, it's up to you when it comes to hindsight, you know, everything appears to be, you know, different than what you would if you were passing through those stages. Have we not done well? We have done remarkably well. Now, one of the issues that has been raised with vaccine development, perhaps we were not tuned to develop vaccines very rapidly because you know, it was essentially the Western world where the rapid vaccine development platforms were uh, available. But at the same time, we must also remember that we had begun on the same path. We had actually established a 10 country platform, research platform in order to sh be sure that we would take different partners together. We become a regional leader the reason was very simple that we knew infections don't respect geographic boundaries. Your safety lies in safety of us. And we were to embark because of the NIPA experience that we had, embark on a new road where regional biosecurity was to become a major priority item. Now there are misses. There is no doubt on that because we tend to, we had we had to react to something which we, we did not imagine at that point in time, but there are certain lessons that we need to take. One of the lessons is we will have to sustain these rapid vaccine development platforms. The reason is twofold. One, there will be new and newer emerging and re-emerging infections that will come. And India has to take the lead for rest of the world, the poorer world, because we essentially are those on whom the rest of the world, which belongs to low middle income or uh, uh, category, which could be further lower as uh, those who are dependent. The second issue that we have to remember is now we need to even prioritize more towards antimicrobial resistance because that's going to hit us very, very, very strongly after a point in time. So we need to develop good R&D related activities to we handle the whole thing well. One thing which we have to understand that in India, we have the best brains. We tend to provide our own brains outside the world and then receive the technology at this end. It is time you know, that compartment between academia and the industry has to be broken down. Now they have to sit together to understand what are national skills and then work along with their own skills, which they could impart, not only for fighting health related causes such as COVID-19, but also antimicrobial resistance, even artificial intelligence, which should come naturally to us. What is also important for us uh, to uh, uh, think about is provision of risk capital. Now, that is one thing which makes an individual take small amount of risks and those risks can be delivered if there are no financial worries that, an, uh, that a person who is developing a startup tends to have. I think if we work together, I'm sure for us, 
sky is the limit to grow. Though we have taken baby steps in COVID-19, we have successfully shown the world that we would be in a position to secure their biosecurity through provision of these vaccines over a period of time. They may be currently appearing as ones which are manufactured in India, but I know for one thing, one thing for sure, even newer technologies are paving in. If you look at Genova vaccine, it is, it is an innovation in itself. You know, they are using mRNA, but that mRNA is different than the one that is used by Pfizer, the one that is used by Moderna. It is a replicating mRNA system which they have developed and they have already received an approval for phase one trials at this juncture. So we look forward to the change in the mindset that has been brought, the issue related to nationalism that has come in everybody's mind. You don't look at only yourself, but you look at others, you look at nation, how it can develop because of the COVID, which widened our uh, way of looking at things. I think we will definitely make a progress. We just need to think that we are, we are not only for self, we are also for the nation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ganga Khedka, uh, and thank you, everybody. Uh, you, uh, Dr. Ganga Khedka, you are right. I mean, uh, we have the brains, we have the talent, we have the ability, but there is a missing link. And uh, I think uh, the pandemic year has served to highlight and bring to attention the missing link. And that missing link is essentially how to uh, marry science technology with, uh, uh, with uh, the corporate sector, bring in private sector investment, create a situation that stops uh, uh, people from leaving India to go in uh, European or American laboratories. And then we bring back the work done by them. And that was the point which I earlier made too. We have come a long way. We have come a long way. And uh, since the Honorable Minister, I, yeah, he's still there. Uh, there was a time when uh, if the government of the day wanted to punish um, a politician, he would be made the Minister of Health or the Minister of Education. Uh, I mean, that is a fact. That is a fact. And, 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 and there would be, uh, the, uh, and, you know, it's like sending the director, uh, the DG or the IG of a state police. Uh, you want to punish him? You send him to the police training school, as if the police training school is of no importance at all. And this is why, in a sense, over 70 years, we have reached a situation that has to, that has to you know, factor in some very drastic measures. And the pandemic in that sense, and as the Honorable Minister pointed out, it posed huge challenges, but it also gave us the opportunity, um, those challenges gave us the opportunity to rethink our options and to presumably moving forward, we will do better. Thank you everybody. And thank, uh, thank you Dr. Harshwardhan for taking time out of your busy schedule. And uh, thanks to all of my fellow panelists and everybody who attended the webinar today. Namaste. Namaste.